বাবা ডাকছে না so this is a radial feeder single end feeding from end a and there are four relays a b c d the relays uh, the fall current at different fall in, uh, terminal is given <coughs> that means station means that this bus fault uh, fault level at this bus then these are the different fault level calculated and plug setting is also given for the relay now we have to set the relay so that what will be the plug setting plug setting is given then what will be the plug setting multiplier and time multiplier setting for the relay that we have to set to obtain a discrimination time of 0.5 second that means if rc is a backup relay of rd then rc will operate 0.5 second later than rd right when it is operating as backup or relay for the station d but when it is operating as a uh, primary relay for station c then it it will have no delay and here rc means this is near to c there may be uh, the, uh, misunderstanding in uh, from drawing this relay this ct means the ct it is near to station d not in the middle okay this rc means it is near to station station c that means it is giving primary protection to station c in that way so the characteristics of idmtl relay is given that means all the relay of same type and these characteristics are given is given and maximum load current in each station is 100 ampere so it is fault level is far higher than the 100 ampere now we shall start from the far end uh, point from the end far end point from the source that means from station d at station d maximum fault current is 2000 ampere plug setting is 50% so from there we can calculate plug setting multiplier delay is 200 by 5 so if i calculate from the primary side then the relay will operate for 100 ampere current on the ct primary we will start to operate and fault level is 200 2000 ampere so similarly to also plug setting multiply 200 2000 in numerator and 50% of 200 so it will be 
so if it is 20 then from the relay characteristics corresponds 20 the operating time is 2.2 right so relay should operate at 2.2 second right and tms of the farthest relay is given 0.1 that means if there be no modification in TMS, if TMS is 1, then operating time is 2.2. But instead of 1, the upper TMS is 0.1. So operating time will be 2.2 into 0.1, so 0.22 second. So it is 0.22 second. Understood? Let me enter, give entry to the last one. I shall not give any more entry. Now you see, so we have set the relay at station D with PSM of 220 and time multiplier setting, time, time multiplier setting is 0.1 and the time of operation will be 0.22 second. If you see the example, we have to set beside PSM and TMS of the relays. Now time multiplier setting of farthest relay is given. So we have to calculate PSM for RD that we have already calculated and all PSM and TMS for the RA, RB and RC. So we have configured RD as the primary relay. Now we have this RC will be the backup protection of RD. So if we RC this relay, relay of station C will provide a backup protection to station D with a with a discriminating time of 0.5 second, right? So if the relay D is operating as at 0.22 second, it is taking time 0.22 second to operate, then RC as a backup relay should operate 0.5 second later. That means at 0.72 second. So for that reason, if we start for relay RC, as a backup relay of session D, here RC is configure is configuring. We are configuring RC as the backup of RD. So if its time is 0.22 second operating time, then its operating time is known 0.72 second. We have to set the PMS, uh, PSM and TMS. So this is the operating time we have got. Now it will operate as backup relay for 2000 ampere fault current, right? Because fault current at uh, session D is 2000 ampere, but plug setting at in case of relay at station C is 100%. Anyway, from there we can calculate the PSM. Primary current is 2000 ampere. Why 2000 ampere? We are setting it as a backup relay for station D, and station D has fault current 1000 ampere. So when it is operating as backup relay, then its uh, PSM has come 6.67. For 6.67 from the characteristics, it is near to 3.5 second, right? Operating time. But we have set this one as 0 0.6, 0 0.72 second. So also for a particular time multiplier setting, the operation is at 0 0.72 second. But for 100% time setting, it should be this 3.5 second. Then what will be the multiplier type, time multiplier setting? Actual time of operation is 3.5. Um, sorry, 100 for 100% 100 time, 100% uh, time setting, operating time is 3. Uh, 3.5, but now it is 0.72. So time multiplier setting is 0.72 by 3.5 simply. So it is 0.21. So 0.21 will be time multiplier setting for relay at station C as backup protection of station D. It is given, it, it, it has come 0.21, but, but there is no option of 0.21, I think, in relay setting. So we have to set in 0.2. So every calculation will be iterative. Now it again, we have to calculate the other steps. But here we shall not do that one. But in practical case, we have to do. <clears throat> for academic purpose, as for our learning only, let us say this is 0.72. So if it is 0.72, now, uh, sorry, 0.2 is the time multiplier setting. Then this time multiplier setting is fixed. When you set it for relay C as backup protection, for, for primary protection also, its time multiplier setting will be 0.21. Because you cannot open the relay online and you have no, every time you cannot set it. 
otherwise protection system will be hampered so it will be fixed at 0.21 second but ideally in practical case is case it should not be 0.21 i am repeating that it will be 0.2 anyway now actually the relay at station c will provide primary protection to station c so for station c you see for station c the bolt, uh, fault level is 3000 ampere so what will be the uh, psm for uh, station c as a primary protection then we can calculate this using the formula it is coming 10 right so it is coming 10 so what is the actual time of operation from the table we can get from 10 for 10 it is 3 so it should be the 3 second to take the operation to make the relay operated for 100 percent time setting when tms equal to 1 but here tms equal to not equal to 1 it are tms equal to 0 0.21 so actual time setting will be the actual time of operation will be 0 0.63 second so from there we can ex ex um, expect that when it will operate okay similarly and you can uh, you can observe that when you go towards the uh, source then the operating time of relay will be lesser for when you you, you will see that when it was for relay d as the um, as the primary protection then it was 0.22 seconds so it is gradually increasing right then similarly you do it yourself i have not done i have given you the result what will happen for relay b relay at b this b will give a primary protection to itself at station b and backup protection to station c and it will automatically give backup protection to station d you can calculate but it is not required you can calculate you can get it if you are interested so here i have calculated only for two cases as backup protection for station c and as a primary protection for station b similarly for relay a you do this calculation yourself so in this is the this thing these thing are called the uh, relay coordination how the relay operation will be coordinated okay so this here we are actually coordinating current for start the recording So in scan configure and you you go through any example of of any book and um, you can get it can you hear me okay then if i get this i cannot understand because in our in in my uh, side the presentation slide is open <clears throat> so in this you calculate and practice different type of problem this type of problem by yourself okay then your idea will be clear now uh, just up to this we have seen you see the example here this example was all these example these example was single and feeding the relay we are giving protection by a relay when there is a one-way communication one-way transmission there was the, 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 that is not both way for transmission that means all are single end feeding similarly for the next example also this is single end feeding but actually this is not the case for practical power system actually for practical practical power system always the power transmission systems are interconnected interconnected means both way power transmission is possible current flow can flow in both the direction so direction does matter okay so that should so in, in case of normal idmtl relay it can give protection over a particular current but it cannot sense the direction of current that is not um, so when the, the sensing the direction of current is required then in that case this type of relay is not fruitful then why sensing of direction of current is required let me discuss that one at first so this is a closed feeder or a feeder with both end feeding right so if we there are different section like this so these are the blue colored are the buses at every bus there are load and this there are different segment of transmission lines these are called feeders in case of protection in, in case of protection 
so this both side arrow are representing that northern relay that we have learned this uh, up to this that means the non directional over current relay that cannot sense the direction of current now say if there be any fault in between relay 1 and relay 2 then obviously relay 1 and relay two, uh, relay 1 and relay 2 will operate but at the same time relay 3 will also operate why because relay 2 bus is nothing but a node so whatever current is flowing through 2 that will be flow that will flow through the uh, through 3 so there will be no discrimination in between relay 2 and relay 3 so both will be uh, uh, this uh, give the signal to the signal to the circuit breaker and the circuit breaker will disconnect the circuit you must remember here 1 2 3 are showing relay that means actually the at this position there are circuit breakers associated with this relay so circuit breaker will disconnect this position based on the relay signal so anyway so if there be any fault between in the section 1 2 in between the relay 1 and 2 then obviously we shall expect 1 and 2 should disconnect and after that as a backup protection 3 4 in this way up to 10 will disconnect if we allow the fault if it is uh, unable to clear the fault or disconnect the circuit anyway but if the in case of relay 3 actually relay 2 and relay 3 will send same current so in that case relay 3 cannot identify that it is it has no need to operate it will operate so i unnecessarily load connected to this bus load connected to this bus will get uh, disconnected okay so okay it's for that reason actually there will be unnecessarily disruption of load so that is not expected a one uh, <clears throat> uh, protection system should not provide that one that's why directional over current relay is required you see this figure here say the both the uh, with all the relays are non directional one okay so what will be the possible current path and the under healthy condition possible current path means possible current ka path means possible uh, possible way to scatter a particular load say if this load say if this is bus between load relay 2 and 3 this load can be scattered by the through this line through line 1 2 or through line 3 4 or by both so on um, all the colored show by shown by green arrow or blue arrow all are the direction of current under healthy condition have you understood this so for that now say there is a unhealthy condition as i have told before that and uh, there is a fault in between the uh, in the section 1 2 then obviously this red color will be the flow of path uh, current right fault current so you see if we use the the non directional over current relay it is obvious both relay 2 and relay 3 will operate and it will disconnect the load associated with it now you see what is happening when fault is there when fault is there then in case of relay 2 current is flowing in opposite direction to the normal condition but in relay 3 current is flowing in the same direction to the normal condition so actually as per this fault relay 3 has no need to operate so we have to prohibit the relay 3 to operate how we can op i how we can make that algorithm make that um, condition you see what is the difference between relay 2 and relay 3 under fault faulted condition in relay 2 current is changing its direction but relay 3 does not so if we sense the direction of current if the direction of current changes through the relay then it operate and along with this abnormal condition then we can in, uh, impose the uh, the impose the direction of directional property within the relay i am repeating say what is the discrimination or difference between uh, difference in relay 2 and relay 3 in relay 2 and under this fault whatever i have shown current has changed the direction green is the normal current red is the abnormal current 
but in relay 3 current is re remaining same and from the analysis we are seeing that there is no need to disconnect the relay 3 no need to operate the relay 3 so what we can conclude from here if the direction of current within the relay changes from, the, from its normal condition then also only there is requirement to disconnect otherwise not so you see under normal condition always current through the relay is towards the bus for the load bus except the source bus for any load bus the relay near to that always normal current should be the near to the towards the bus because the purpose is to, to supply the current but during abnormal condition always power current is away from the bus so when current is away from the bus then only relay will operate otherwise restrain that should be the condition right so now if we apply that one then you can see now we can provide the discrimination whatever i have told that they have shown here so here you see whenever there is a uh, abnormal, the red red color is shown by abnormal current then you should see in relay to eight in all these relays it's not available it is disconnect uh, it will be it is the changing its direction so for, for these relays will be will operate when there is a fault at p so this relay 2 will operate relay 2 will operate as primary relay then relay 3 will not operate at back as backup relay but relay 4 will operate as backup relay first backup relay otherwise the relay 6 second otherwise relay 8 relay 8 otherwise relay 10 right why relay 10 generally for due near the source we do not provide any um, non -direct directional property of um, uh, relay with directional property because from source current can go and both the direction so for source uh, relay near to source will always have the non directional property will not have directional property but other relays will have the directional property have you understood let me change the uh, connectivity one minute So that, that's why there is a need of directional property of uh, within the relay, okay. So relay, it is simple that due to over current, we can get a torque and relay will operate. But now we have to generate the torque when there is a change in direction, otherwise not. So that is also a challenge. So it is the directional over current relay, whatever I have discussed, it is written here. Now, what will be the relay setting? As I have discussed, relay 2, so for the section 1, 2, the relay 2 will be the primary setting, then relay 4, then relay 6. So, time multiply switching will be gradually increasing, right? If we start, if we see any fault in the section 1, 2, the opposite thing will occur if the fault is in the section 9, 10. Similarly, for other section, we can um, analyze the what may be the time multiplier setting. Now, what is the directional over current relay? You see, this is the direct over current relay, this part that we have already learned. Okay, not this part. This portion. What our meter type? Relay. Right, this portion we have already learned. There was an upper electromagnet, there is a current, there will be an induced current, and for that, this contact will operate. But for directional over current, relay, there is another element that is called directional element. Directional element will control whether the, the um, secondary circuit of the directional non directional 
part will be connected or not you see here for the directional part there is no trip coil circuit it is not connecting a trip coil circuit but it is connecting actually secondary circuit of the non directional element so obviously in directional over current relay there are two parts at part at first directional element will operate then it will close the secondary circuit if the secondary circuit is closed then only there will be induced induced current and there will be torque otherwise not so second the closing of secondary circuit in case of non directional over current relay is controlled by directional element otherwise constructionally both are same here i have shown shown two watt hour meter type relay they may be different type shaded pole type induction cup type but this is the concept have you understood so actually use now now note in case of non directional element there are current current is sensing the uh, the primary current is activating the primary circuit but in case of non directional element there are two energizing uh, quantity one is voltage another is current fault current you see here fault current is activating the the other circuit uh, secondary circuit of the uh, directional element as well as primary circuit of the non directional element so in case of directional element the secondary circuit there actually there is no secondary circuit there are two for torque generation we need two fluxes two fluxes are default are generated in case of directional element by two type of a, very parameters from the circuit one is voltage of the system another is current of the system current will obviously be the fault current but voltage is obviously not the fault voltage because fault voltage is zero so fault the voltage should not be the fault phase voltage it will be some other phase voltage so if uh, it is it is giving uh, protection to r phase then voltage may be vr should not be vrn it may be vrb may be vr um, uh, vr um, uh, y in that way or vy but not vrn because vrn will be zero for phase two neutral uh, for the ground fault in r phase so this is the uh, methodology to to incorporate the directional property within a relay over current relay now directional element so one thing is the directional element should be fast because directional element will co close the non non directional part so that's why the inertia of the directional element should be as minimal as possible that's why actually induction cup type over current relay is used because induction cup type over current relay has minimum uh, inertia and this is also called reverse power relay single input relay since is both directional direction and over current feature of the system this is called reverse power relay also this is called cross polarized relay also because we use voltage of one phase and with current of the faulted phase that that's why it is called cross polarized relay also so if we configure with non parallel induction cup type over current relay as the directional element and shaded pole type as the non directional element then this will be the configuration so in this way you can uh, understand that how this feature is incorporated in the normal over current relay so this is the directional element so what is the speciality of directional element in directional element there are two energizing coil which are energized by separate parameters one is energized by voltage another is energized by current okay in most of the direction relay voltage is the polarizing quantity and current is the actuating quantity polarizing quantity means that will create the phase difference and actuating quantity means beyond which the current will the relay will operate okay so since voltage and current are currents are used and voltage of other phase is used for, for to provide protection in another phase so it is called cross polarization and obviously both voltage and currents are are taken to the relay through ct and pt now how the torque is developed in directional element we know we know that torque developed is i1 i2 sin alpha 
that is proportional to i square if alpha is 90 degree that we have already discussed now this k k2 is the spring restraint right spring restraint right so this is the k i1 i2 sin alpha so this this overcurrent this torque equation is valid for the directional element also because directional element is nothing but a over nothing but an overcurrent relay but how directional feature is introduced if one input is feed from system voltage then torque becomes this feed means one is the here two current in case of non directional current relay both the current was a component of current fault current if a part of the fault current but here one is proportional to the fault current say i suffix i and another is a proportional to the system voltage some system voltage i suffix b then we can do that one we can um, say we can make the circuit in that way so k1 i i v i v sin alpha minus k2 will be then the torque equation since so, this is the voltage say and this is the current maybe abnormal current maybe normal current but the current for the for the phase of for which we are providing protection okay and say this is the iv is the voltage uh, sorry current proportional to voltage then obviously any current proportional to voltage must be some angle lagging so there is some angle lagging yeah. then this voltage is taken in such a way i have told you that voltage is not the faulted phase voltage some other voltage voltage is should be taken in some in such a way that current should lead okay so voltage if we want to provide protection at phase r we shall select such a prop, such a voltage that voltage will lag behind ir right from the system voltage we have to select one one that type of such type of voltage anyway if we can do that one how i am coming later if we can do that one say the current is theta angle leading from there right then obviously this torque will be maximum when alpha equal to 90 degree alpha what is alpha alpha is the angle between these two currents so angle is this one i have already shown i and and i so this is alpha so when the alpha is 90 degree then obviously this dotted line will be the phase of this ii so in that case torque will be maximum because sin alpha alpha 90 means sin alpha maximum one then we can get maximum torque what why this maximum torque is required because maximum torque will provide the maximum minimum time of operation <coughs> now theta be the phase angle between <coughs> voltage and current right voltage and the actuating current actually then <coughs> when this theta will be equal to tau say this ii when superimposed with maximum torque line like this then only there is maximum torque that means this theta will be in that case this much so that theta is in that case will be equal to tau and tau is always leading leading means current is leading from voltage that's why tau is called maximum torque angle that means for which um, amount of leading of current from voltage we can get the maximum torque now from the phasor diagram if we equate this uh, angle then obviously 90 minus alpha this is 90 this is alpha so this angle is 90 minus alpha is equal to theta minus tau actually we want to represent this alpha by theta minus tau then we can substitute that now alpha will come 90 plus theta minus tau so if we just put that one we can get the expression of current uh, torque in terms of theta theta minus tau k vi cos theta minus tau minus k2 now when theta minus tau is zero then torque obviously is maximum that means that theta equal to tau because tau is the maximum torque angle now when theta minus tau is less than plus minus 90 degree or less or equal less than plus minus 90 degree then t will be torque will be positive otherwise negative torque positive means the disc will rotate at the desired direction 
torque is negative means disc will rotate at the opposite direction so in that way we can by using the polarization by sensing the voltage uh, taking a component of voltage as a current we are making providing that directional property for a particular value of theta minus tau torque is becoming positive for other value it is becoming negative so we can we can provide a directional property to the pole to the relay and one more thing you see here it was iv so iv means actually v by z something will be there so actually if it is iv we can write this v by z so in that case this proportionality constant will be changed we can write t equal to iv sin alpha also in that way so here i have directly written this one okay in that way so actually when theta minus tau is less or equal to 90 plus minus 90 degree then it will operate that means only this upper portion upper region shown by blue like blue uh, color positive torque the relay will operate in negative torque it will operate actually in opposite direction because there but there is a spring spring will not uh, allow the spring this to rotate in opposite direction right so it will uh, it will restrict that one and there is backstop also so for that reason this relay will operate only in the positive direction not in the negative direction maximum torque angle is the angle for by which current supply to the relay leads the voltage supply to the relay for the maximum relay maximum relay torque that i have already told now how we can make this one say uh, current is lagging uh, leading behind voltage so he, how much the current will lead behind the uh, lead from the um, uh, lead from the voltage that we can set from we can for three phase system there are different possibility already in the inherent in that but depending on that how much it will lead from the voltage depending on that there are different type of relay mainly three type 30, 90 degree 60 degree and 30 degree so if there is 90 degree connection you see current is this one so if we take the, the current as uh, for a phase as ia but voltage as vbc then you see vbc is 90 degree la la lagging from the ia so in that case a phase uh, will give you the 90 degree difference so in that case this is called 90 degree relay because we are pro providing 90 degree phase difference between voltage and current right so we must sense the uh, we must supply a current proportional to this vvc so what will be the um, relay connection so relay current coil will sense for a phase the current will be ia but the voltage will be vvc so accordingly it will be tapped from the pt so this will be the connection for relay current coil or voltage coil similarly you draw for the other phases it comes in examination that you draw the winding connection relay coil connections for the 90 degree relay work current relay then you must draw total thing only the phasor diagram cannot explain all the thing whatever how, the way i have explained you must write in that way ma'am can you please explain it again that zigzag connection to make the 90 degree phase shift there is no zigzag connection ma'am actually current current should lead the voltage so we have a current say we want to provide protection for phase a so ia should be current right so current we need a voltage right that should lag 90 degree if we want to make a 90 degree phase difference is not it now you see this uh, this voltage curve voltage relation for the three phase voltages if this is a this voltage is ab right ab if the a is the high potential sorry if there is the high, if i write vab then the arrow will be in opposite direction then vbc so vbc will be vbc sorry again vbc b is at higher potential so this will be vbc similarly vca so vca will be this one so we have actually three voltages ab bc this is ab this is bc this is ca 
so um, among these three voltages this we can utilize for polarization so this voltage should be vbc if we want to provide uh, cross polarization and if we want to make 90 degree cross polarization understood yes so similarly if we want to provide 60 degree there are, these are the possibilities we can make any one so similarly for 30 degree connection for 30 degree connection you see these are three voltages this is a b this is b c this is c a now current is here i a we need a 30 degree connection we need a voltage which will lack 30 degree from the um, current so opposite of vca is only possible only this voltage is possible so this should be ca this is the concept understood so actually if this is the concept if this is the clear to you then this much tapping you can do so from the these are the cities so from cities if this is the a a a phase relay then voltage coil one minute then a should be the if the a phase relay for a phase current coil will sense ia then voltage coil should say should uh, um, sense the vac in that way this connection should be there understood yes ma'am then similarly for 60 degree connection that i am not explaining in the same way i have done you do it yourself okay and if you cannot then tell me in the next class cost polarization is done i have already discussed they still i have written here for a ready made note phase to neutral voltage drop drastically and sufficient deflecting torque is not obtained that's why cost polarization is required that's why for r phase voltage you shall not take vrn as the um, voltage coil and that will not give the any phase difference also we can provide some phase difference if there be any phase angle lagging power factor but that will not be fruitful directional element should make contact even at normal load current that means wide angle difference between exciting voltage and current under normal condition so for a wide angle difference it is better to take current from one phase and voltage from the others and generally relay coil energization we give for the phase that we are giving for which we are providing the protection now over current earth fault road protection now this over current relay we may provide for earth fault also so in earth fault path in ground path in neutral path of any um, any device we can put this over current relay because under normal condition there will be no current through the neutral but during abnormal during only earth fault there will be current through the neutral so it is better to provide the earth fault relay in the neutral path so if there be any this uh, um, if there be any abnormality they, this relay will operate and this will disconnect not the earth connection obviously or the connection of the relay connection of the device to the to the system understood so earth fault relays actually have low current setting why because you know the zero sequence rail impedance for transmission line is lower is higher 1.5 times of the positive or negative sequence impedance so actually earth fault current will be lower so for that reason, earth fault relay settings are low. That's why plug setting for earth fault relay is in step of 10% up to 80%, I think. So that is the real, uh, reason. And for a star delta connection, we have to provide earth fault protection on the star side. Because in delta side, we cannot provide the earth fault protection. If we want to provide, then we need a arding transformer. That will be this class, uh, discussed in the other part of your class, of, your, uh, of this paper. Now, earth fault relay, we may provide by, uh, we may give by sensing the uh, summation of currents also. One, we can provide in neutral path. Another, in phase, so we, we can sense the three phase currents, add them, and then we can pass it through the earth fault relay. Under normal conditions, summation of all currents will be zero. So, there will be no current to the earth fault relay. So, it will not operate under abnormal condition the summation will not be zero when the earth will be involved then this earth fault relay will be operated right 
similarly the instead of three phase fault relay we can use two two phase relays to sense the arc fault relay because if this uh, if there be any unbalance in between uh, in uh, unbalance in between these three phases only two relays will be sufficient to feed the arc fault relay it is no need to provide feed through the three phase fault relays but if you should remember phase fault protection will be given for the three phases arc fault will be given will, will be given for overall system overall device so if there is a motor there will be phase ideally there should be phase fault protection for the three phases and there will be another arc fault protection okay but sometime we compromise we may uh, provide some protection some not to reduce the cost because relays are very costly one over current relay is cost near to 1 lakh or more than that directional arc fault relay is why why it is essential when the down down the arc fault relay may be directional property may not be directional property when directional property is required when there is parallel feeders or rail mirroring main system the thing i have discussed that is written here now you see when there is a arc fault then if we want to provide directional relay then we near need a voltage because directional relay need a voltage sense sense actuation along with current then hard for arc fault relay how we will we, we can uh, feed the voltage because for arc fault relay the voltage will goes to zero then we can sense the voltage from the broken delta say here this is the normal condition so at normal condition at the voltage at point c is zero because this point is c as well as this point is c so if we connect this one actually this delta connection we regularly do and there is no voltage here so at if we measure this voltage you just open this to terminal that means as i have shown here vac and vca right uh, vbc so if we just connect this two then there will be no voltage but when there is a fault say c phase has fault so it it has become zero in that case there will be a voltage between in this two point because in that case in in between this two terminal now vac is not existing or vbc is not existing so this voltage is called broken delta that i have shown here in case of um, single phase transformer bank okay or three phase five limb transformer so in that way we can get the broken delta voltage that broken delta voltage we can feed to the directional over current relay to sense the directional property right so in that way that broken delta voltage can be sent can be provided now here say this is the relay current coil say this may be voltage operated in that case voltage will uh, the summation of current is sent through the current coil and this is provided to the relay through the voltage coil residual voltage is from tertiary delta winding should be given voltage polarized voltage connection is not shown here similarly there may be current operated if there be any current we can provide this one through relay using this voltage coil okay so this is called this is the directional arc fault relay how we can provide the directional property to a arc fault relay why we need the voltage residual voltage because for, for to provide the directional property we need a voltage actuation along with the current actuation that we can provide in this way so advantage of arc fault relay over over current relay so arc fault relay if we use as uh, over current relay if we use as arc fault relay then the positive sequence current is uh, the zero sequence impedance is high so the magnitude of zero sequence current will be will be uh, less so it will vary more with the fault location because the, the zero sequence impedance is more so in that way the there is advantage of arc fault relay over the over current relay magnitude of zero sequence current does not get very much affected by generation capacity because zero sequence current is dependent only on fault the ground relay pickup need not have higher than the load current levels because in ground relay there is no question of load current so actually arc fault relay providing providing of arc current relay arc fault relay protection is easier than the over current relay 
here advantage means that that the protection provision to give protection using earth fault relay is easier using over current relay than the over current protection over current protection means phase protection now generally which type of equipment we protect to using the over current relay transmission line generator transformers bus bars motors but for transformer winding protection we cannot use over current relay because in say there is a trans fault in the transformer itself then we cannot sense it using over current relay say one current is going towards the transformer that is abnormal that is at the transformer primary side or secondary side there is a huge current that we can sense using over current relay but when there is a fault within the transformer current is going normally but outcoming is abnormally then we cannot sense it using over current relay because the current range voltage range is the totally different from primary side to secondary side in case of transformer so in that case we shall we use the differential relay that i shall discuss in next class that's all for today ma'am can you repeat it again why we can't protect winding using over current re relay for over current sir this is these are the two windings i shall discuss in detail so say this current is set, uh, say any current i is uh, scheduled current then you can provide a over current relay you can sense it that this current is abnormal and you can disconnect it right and here also that that th same thing current is i dash it is abnormal you can disconnect so the, in that case the fault is near to the transformer secondary or near to the transformer primary but if the fault is in between then normal current will go here but the transformer winding current will change so winding current will be normal for the primary say fault in transformer secondary then winding current in transformer primary will be normal but in transformer secondary will be abnormal so there is a question of comparison whether the currents are normal or abnormal that how much is the difference so differential relay in that case is required so in that case we cannot sense it using over current relay because over over current relay there is no scope of comparison and the current over current relay cannot compare the current of two different levels right say for the say uh, what to say 11 by 33 kv transformer say say 20 mva the current and voltage level is entirely different from primary to secondary yes tell okay i have completed already so what who, who can who want to do they can they can leave okay any any more question no. otherwise otherwise we please leave the class ma'am so basically in these cases we will use that differential relay right for transfer any binding, binding protection say when in case of any binding since in generator binding also So the fault, fault actually may be developed in transmission line, otherwise in winding. For in line or connection, if there be any fault in connection or in line, then we can provide protection by earth by over current, because current entering to the device is uh, changing. Okay, but if the fault is within the device, right? That you have not uh, the whatever the fault analysis you have done, all in the near to the device, in the line like that, not in the device. So, if the fault is in the equipment, in the winding, then that cannot be sensed using the current relay, over current relay, because over current relay there is only single input, one current. Then how it can compare that what current is different in different section? So, for that reason, we need comparison. So, we need to identify the difference between the current. Say, for example, here. Say here, just um, let me draw. Say this is one winding, any winding. Say fault is here. So whatever current entering, current outgoing will be different. But the differential over current relay you may connect here or here anywhere. But only at one point it will sense that current and it will operate in that way. By positioning at this point, it cannot sense this current. Understood? So. Over current relay will not be useful in that case. In that yes, case, we have to use differential relay. 
I shall discuss differential relay, but you must remember differential relay for any winding protection, we use differential relay. For any type of equipment protection, device protection, we at the outside of the device, we use overcurrent relay. Understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Thanks. that's all. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome.